Thank you. Now recognize a member from Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Congratulations. I'm confident that you will be fair in your judgments and in your representation of this sacred institution. I also wanted to acknowledge this territory as a traditional gathering place for many people, including the Mississauga of the Credit. I look forward to continuing the historic relationship between uh, First Nations and the Crown. On June 7th, the people and families of Carleton chose change. People like Earl Stanley from Metcalfe, who celebrated the 25-year anniversary of Stanley's Old Maple Lane Farm, a family-run hospitality venue in Metcalfe. People like the former mayor and then city councillor of Rideau Goulburn, Glenn Brooks, his lovely wife, Gail Brooks, and their entire family. People like Stephen and Brenda Lewis and all their friends and family out in Ashton. Elizabeth McNee, Greg Thurlow, Phil McNee from Osgood, who had never been politically involved before. Peter and Karen Gartenberg in Manatech, Rich and Joanne Wilson in Manatech, Norm and Sue Hotchkiss in York's Corners, Dave Eggett and Karen Newell in Greeley, Roger and Penny Graves, Dave Lee, his family, and all his friends and neighbours in Stittsville, including those who had never voted Progressive Conservative before. Joyce Wood, who told me that in her youth she was involved with the Young Liberals and would never get involved politically. And Ted Wood out in Burt's Rapids. Kirsten Jensen, a young mother and first-time voter in Richmond. Mr. Speaker, local business owners like Cameron Kalos, who owns a local coffee shop in Richmond, and Mike from Mike's Garden Harvest in Manatick chose change. Local and well-known Carleton Farm families from Kenmore and Vernon all the way to North Gore, many of whom have been in the farm for generations, including the Scoutons, the Akers, the Fosters, the Samples, the Nixons, the McCormicks, the Blacks, and countless more. They all chose change. I met hundreds of first-time and young voters at the doors, Mr. Speaker, including Elena Hyder, Jeremy Leedke, John Buchan, Rory Tyler, and Shayla Hotchkiss. Countless doctors, professionals, business owners, people who had never been politically involved or who had never voted PC before. There are too many to name, Mr. Speaker, but all of them decided to help me on my journey to represent the people of Carleton, to voice their concerns, to resolve their problems, and to bring positive change not just to Carleton, but across Ontario. On June 7, Mr. Speaker, over 50% of Carleton's voters chose to put their trust and faith in me. I will be forever grateful to them, and words will never express the depth of my gratitude. And to those who did not vote for me, Mr. Speaker, I want to make it very clear that when I say I'm here to represent everyone, I truly mean it. Carleton is a brand new riding comprised of Nepean Carleton, Carleton, Mississippi Mills, and Ottawa South. I wish to recognize the previous work done for the riding, by, uh, for the riding of Carleton by MPP Jack McLaren, Minister Lisa McLeod, MPP John Fraser, for, and former MPP Norm Sterling. And I look forward to continuing to work with the minister and with MPP John Fraser, as well as Minister Fullerton, all of the Ottawa Region MPPs, and my federal counterpart, the Honourable Pierre Polyev, and local municipal politicians. The riding of Carleton is home to 102,915 2, people. It covers the entire southern and rural portion of Ottawa's municipal boundaries, as well as three rapidly growing suburban communities, Stittsville, Riverside South, and Finley Creek. Carleton is a wonderful mix of rural and urban, old and new. In fact, a month ago, the Richmond Village Association celebrated the 200th anniversary of the town of Richmond, a beautiful area that predates Confederation itself. Agriculture is not just an extremely important sector of the economy, but it is also a way of life. In fact, some of Carleton's families go back generations to the first settlers on the land. Carleton's farmers play an important role in Ottawa. John and Sandra Vandenberg of Rideau Pines Farm in North Gore supply produce to top-tier Ottawa restaurants like Becta and Play. Tom and Marlene Black on Fallowfield Road have donated part of their farmland to the Ottawa Food Bank, 
in support of their community harvest program. And in 2016, the Black Family Farm donated over 90,000 pounds of fresh produce alone to the food bank. The Richmond and Metcalf Fairs both predate Federation, Confederation, and every year farmers from across the region gather to participate in the Ottawa Carleton Plowmen's Association plowing match. Carleton's community and business associations are numerous, vibrant, and diverse. We have countless community parades, festivals, art shows, sporting competitions, Canada Day celebrations, Christmas events, and more. It has been truly a pleasure getting to know the people of Carleton. The friendships that I have made and the lessons that I have learned will last a lifetime. And the most important lesson I have learned is to listen with both ears. Mr. Speaker, it is truly a privilege for me to rise in this House today to address you and my fellow members as the democratically elected representative for the new riding of Carleton. And I do not use the phrase democratically elected lightly. You see, Mr. Speaker, I was born in Iran in 1985, shortly after the Iranian Revolution that overthrew the Shah and replaced him with a theocracy ruled by strict Islamic ideology, a theocracy overrun with corruption and greed, a theocracy that throws people in jail for criticizing the government, hangs homosexuals, stones women, and allows its citizens to suffer and live in poverty while pocketing billions of dollars in oil money. My father, having lived in Texas for almost a decade in the 70s, returned to Iran after the revolution had taken place to settle down and start a family. When I was born, he looked at the infant girl in his arms and realized he could not raise a daughter in that environment. And so, Mr. Speaker, my parents gave up everything they owned, said goodbye to their families, and on May 24, 1986, we landed at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport in Montreal. My parents had two suitcases, $50 in their pocket, and a one-year-old baby girl, me. They had no friends, no family, no contacts. My father tells me that our first night in Canada, he rented an unfurnished apartment. My parents slept on newspapers that night, and I slept bundled up in my father's jacket. My parents gave up everything they had so that they could raise their family in a free and democratic country, a country like Canada. They came here with nothing, and they expected nothing. My parents taught me to work hard, to play by the rules, to be thankful for our freedoms, and most importantly, Mr. Speaker, to respect and to give back to the people and communities that built Canada and made it the best country in the world. If someone had told my parents that not only would I be the first person in the family to become a lawyer, but also the first person to uh, or sorry, but also that 32 years later, I would have the opportunity and privilege to serve the people of Ontario right here in the House as the first ever Iranian immigrant woman to become a Canadian politician. I don't think they would have believed it. And Mr. Speaker, the fact that the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario is the first party to welcome someone like me into its fold speaks volumes about our party's commitment and dedication to equality and equal opportunity for everyone. This government is truly a government for the people. The throne speech was a clear indication of that fact, and I echo Mr. Downey's comments in that regard. I am excited and hopeful for what this government can and will do in the next four years for the people. I hope that my story and my journey inspires others to give back and serve their communities in any way possible. I am incredibly grateful to the people of Carleton for placing their confidence in me, and I promise to do everything in my power to ensure that their voices, concerns, and needs are heard in this House. Thank you. Right. 